Hello students, my name is Nate with Wi-Fi CFI. Welcome back to another quick training Tuesday tip. Today we're going to be talking about the six magnetic compass errors. So how does a magnetic compass work? Before we jump into the errors, let's talk about how it works. Now it's a very simple instrument that uses magnetization to give cardinal information to pilots in flight. In other words, heading information. That's what cardinal means. Whether you're flying north, east, south, or west, it gives you that information. Now, while compasses are reliable, they can experience some errors. And the acronym you're going to want to remember today for the compass errors is VD MONA. That's V D M O N A. It stands for variation, deviation, magnetic dip, oscillation, northerly turning errors, and acceleration and deceleration errors. So that's VD MONA. We're going to go through each one of these six things really quickly here in this video just to give you a basis of what causes these things and how they can be corrected in flight. First, we have variation. What is it? Variation is the angular difference between true and magnetic north. So true and magnetic north are not in the same geographical location on the planet. Now the compass points to magnetic north. However, certain navigation charts are drawn in relation to true north. Hence, the compass is not aligned with the navigation chart. Now, this isn't in every situation, but in some situations, you can get this. Like VFR sectionals, for example, are drawn in relation to true north, and the compass is pointing in relation to magnetic north. So if we're looking at our picture here, true north is our little green pin. That is the most north point on the planet. You can't walk or go any further north. That's true north. Magnetic north is where this red pin is here. So you can see it's not right at the North Pole. Because of that, charts, VFR sectionals in particular, are drawn in relationship to true north. So they start here with the green pin, where our compass is pointing at this red pin, where magnetic north is. Okay. So because of this, pilots must make mathematical calculations to convert their true north headings to flyable magnetic headings using lines of variation drawn on those VFR sectional charts. You may have seen that when you've looked at a VFR sectional, it's got dash lines in the background and it'll say, you know, 13 degrees east, 13 degrees west, whatever it may be. You need to make the correct mathematical calculations to change your heading from a true north heading into a flyable magnetic heading and you use those numbers. Just remember, west is best east is least. So if you see a 13 degrees east, you need to minus 13 degrees from your true heading to get your magnetic heading. In other words, when you're up flying, what should you be flying? You should be flying 13 degrees less than whatever your true heading calculation came out to be. That's variation. Deviation is our next one. What is it? Compass deviation occurs due to the electromagnetic fields of the airplane. Now these fields can cause small errors in compass readings. So how do we correct for it? First, the compass is calibrated by a mechanic and the errors that are unable to be calibrated are then shown and published on the compass deviation card, which you can see right here on this picture. So we've got all these electromagnetic fields going around in the aircraft that can mess with our compass and what our compass is telling us. The mechanics try to calibrate it correctly. Whatever they're unable to calibrate, they give us a compass deviation card for. For instance, looking at this compass deviation card, we can see if we want to fly north, we actually have to fly minus one. So we have to fly one degree less than north. We actually have to fly 359 on the compass in order for that to equate to 360. And so on and so forth. The next category we have is if we want to fly a heading of 030, we have to add one degree, so we should be flying 031. So the compass up here should show 031 if we want to fly 030. Now these are pretty small uh, calculations typically. I don't think I've really ever seen more than, I don't know, six or seven, okay? It's usually smaller, but we need to have this in here so we know that we're flying the correct magnetic heading and that it has been corrected for those electromagnetic fields of the aircraft. Moving on to magnetic dip. What is this? This occurs when the magnetic compass is attempting to dip. So instead of sitting flat, like you can see my hand, it's actually attempting to dip down and point 
at the North Pole. This dipping can cause turning errors in both the northern and southern hemispheres where a compass is essentially balanced at the equator. It might make a little more sense looking at this picture here. We got the Earth and these are the magnetic fields that surround the Earth. So when you're flying around here at the magnetic compass, you can see the lines at the equator are fairly straight. Essentially, your compass is pretty balanced. However, as you get closer and closer to the North Pole, that compass will want to dip on you. Instead of sitting flat and giving you good information, it will want to dip on you and that can mess with your compass indications when you're making certain turns. Now the same thing happens in the Southern Hemisphere, but we're going to be focusing on it in the Northern Hemisphere since that's where most of our audience is. How is it corrected for? There isn't much that can be done mechanically to account for these errors. However, there are some things pilots can perform operationally, some things you can do in the cockpit to correct for them. And we're going to discuss that further in the northerly turning error section, which is coming up in just a couple slides. But that's what causes it. You're getting too close to the North Pole and that compass is wanting to dip. Again, same thing happens in the Southern Hemisphere. You're getting too close to the Southern Hemisphere and that compass wants to dip down and point at the magnetic source. We have oscillation now. This one's very simple, basic. This occurs when the aircraft is experiencing turbulence. Since the magnetic compass floats in a housing of fluid, so you can see here's the compass, here's the housing, there's fluid in here that the compass floats in. When you are in turbulence, the compass can start to bounce around inside of this fluid and inside of this housing. This can make the compass difficult for pilots to utilize at times, especially in heavy turbulence. You could, you could have that compass bouncing all over the place and it's very hard to read your heading. There isn't too much that can be done about it other than flying to areas where there's less turbulent airflow or obviously using your GPS, using your VOR, using different navigation aids besides the compass. Northerly turning errors, as promised. So. These turning errors are caused by a magnetic dip that we just talked about two slides ago. In order to account for this magnetic dip, we need to use the acronym UNOS. That stands for undershoot north and overshoot south. In other words, if we're going to be turning, we're using our magnetic compass, we're going to be making a turn to the north. It doesn't have to be due north, which you're going to see from our picture here in just a second. It doesn't have to be due north, but if it's a northerly heading, we need to undershoot those headings. In other words, we need to roll wings level before we get to the heading that we're heading towards. In the, if we're turning towards a heading in the south, we need to overshoot that heading before going wings level. And here's our picture. So as I said, we're gonna look at this as though it is a compass as a top-down view, okay? All of these headings up here, so you've got east and west, all of the headings above east and west are our northerly headings. We're going to undershoot all of these headings. Everything below the east-west line are the headings that we are going to overshoot. These are our southerly headings. That's why they're in different colors. So we undershoot everything in blue and we're gonna overshoot everything in gold. Now, how much do we overshoot and undershoot by? That depends on the latitude that you're flying at. I'm making this video here in the United States where we're about 30 degrees latitude. So that's where I am getting these numbers from. If you're flying at different latitudes, you're gonna to have to undershoot and overshoot by more or less amounts. But let's take a couple examples. Let's say we're flying a heading of 090 and we would like to turn left to a heading of 360. We're gonna go ahead and start our left turn at standard rate and we're gonna roll out 30 degrees Essentially, we're going to go wings level with the airplane 30 degrees before we get to a heading of 360. So we would actually go wings level at a heading of 030. All right, let's take another example. We're flying to the west and we want to make a turn to the south. Let's say we want to make a turn to 210. Okay, left hand turn to 210. We're going to establish our turn at standard rate and we need to overshoot 210 by 20 degrees. So we're actually gonna fly past 210 by 20 degrees and then bring the airplane wings level. When you do that, the compass will settle on the heading that you were looking for. Again, these are caused by magnetic dip and they depend on the latitude 
that you're flying at. Just remember undershoot north, overshoot south, and all of these undershoot and overshoots amounts will change depending on where you're flying in the world. This is just an example for the United States. Lastly, we have acceleration and deceleration errors. What are these? If a pilot accelerates or decelerates sharply in an aircraft, it can cause the compass to make momentary erroneous turning indications when a turn is actually not being made. You're just going straight and you're accelerating or you're decelerating really quickly, but the compass can actually show a momentary turn to either the north or toward the south. The acronym that we need to remember when dealing with acceleration and deceleration errors is ANS. A is accelerate, N is north, so accelerate north, D is decelerate, and S is south. So if we're making an acceleration, and this is just for the northern hemisphere here, it would be just the opposite in the southern hemisphere. But if we're accelerating, the compass will show a momentary erroneous turn towards the north if it's a very sharp acceleration. And if we're decelerating very sharply, the compass could show a momentary turn towards the south. Let's go ahead and look at it. So if this is our aircraft, we got northeast, south, and west. We can see that our aircraft is flying to the east. If the aircraft accelerates, the compass could swing and show a momentary turn towards the north. If we decelerate very quickly, the compass could swing and show a momentary turn towards the south. Now these are momentary turns, uh, momentary turns, sorry, by the compass. It should then level itself out and go back to the correct heading, but initially it could be showing you the wrong heading. These acceleration and deceleration errors are most uh, prominent when aircraft are flying in on east and west headings. They're not so prominent on north and south headings. And we dive into that and why this happens in our magnetic compass lesson, uh, the full lesson on Wi-Fi CFI. But this is the basics here. Remember, accelerate north, decelerate south. If you're accelerating, you could get a turn to the north. If you're decelerating, you could get a momentary turn toward the south on your compass. More tips and tricks. There's a whole bunch more. So for all the best aviation tips and tricks and to study hundreds hundreds of hours of free content. Just visit our website at wificfi.com and you can also study on the go with our free mobile app. You can watch all these videos, uh, flashcards, workbooks, audiobooks. There's all kinds of free content on that Wi-Fi CFI mobile app and on the website, wificfi.com. So thanks for joining us guys and we'll see you on our next Tuesday tip next week. Take care.